second start and his first touchdown of the year. Jason Armstead on the return started at his 11. Had a big return game against Hamilton last week. Trying to give Kevin Glenn good field position. It is a great start for the Edmonton Eskimos on the road against a hot team that's won two in a row. And right out of the gate, Ricky Ray goes deep. He finds Maurice Mann on Willie Amos. And then they get a matchup with Greg Pratter, who is a big target at 6-2 as well, across the middle, again on Amos. And Ron McClendon finishes it off. This is the start the Eskimos were looking for after that 40-4 thrashing they took ahead to the Montreal West. Well, let's see how Winnipeg responds. And a quick hitter, complete to Armstrong. Brought down on the corner by Jordan Younger. Well, Kevin Glenn, the starting quarterback, has been calling his plays since the Hamilton game three or four weeks ago. He has Reed in the backfield. There's Milt Stiegel, number 85. Over 100 yards in his last couple of games for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And the offensive line with Picard in his sixth start at center. They've been better since he's been back. Tonight's starting line is brought to you by Holiday Inn Hotels. Look again at Holiday Inn. The 60th catch of the year for Armstrong. Went for eight. Fred Reed second and two. And he is brought down on a good tackle by Kenny Anatolu, who led the Eskimos in tackles in Montreal with eight. And Reed stopped close to the first down and looks like this will require a measurement. Boy, did he close in a hurry. Kenny Anatolo was, was there in a heartbeat. Dan Kepley, the linebacker coach for the Edmonton Eskimos, saying that he was looking forward to this game to see how their defense would respond. They've given up way too many yards along the ground in the last couple of weeks. Fred Reed has the first down. 368 yards along the ground to be exact. And I asked Edmonton Eskimos about that. They said, well, a couple of guys in the wrong gaps, a couple of guys freelancing a little bit, but they feel like they've got a good chance tonight to get better at that part of the defense. Good luck at Daryl Robertson making his second CFL start at defensive end. And now Reed will try that right side and he'll be wrestled down. Sadiq Shabazz, the safety. And the Eskimos jacked up on defense. They are flying around tonight. You can see both offensively and defensively. Here is their starting lineup. They get Dario Romero back in the middle. Jim Davis not in the lineup. There is Eric Taylor and Daryl Robertson in there. Augie Baranachea in the middle of that linebacking core. And then the secondary with Jordan Younger and Williams. Kenny Williams on the outside. Two for Reed, second and eight. Kevin Glenn to pass. And he guns that with authority and has Armstrong again. Wrestled down after a first down catch at the 54. Big game by Derek Armstrong a week ago versus Hamilton. He had seven catches. 126 yards really broke out after a couple of of games where he didn't he didn't go over 100 yards. He has 400 yard games on the season. Nice curl out there for Derek Armstrong. Came into the game sixth in catches, seventh in receiving yards after his fourth 100 yard game of the year. So back to back first outs for the Bombers. Just pushing across midfield, working against the wind. Here in the first quarter, a little stutter step by Reed. And Fred Reed with a good game and a first down to the 43. That was Fred Reed all by himself because the point of attack was taken away by the Edmonton defense. And Reed right here is going to just see that it's there's nothing to the play side, so he'll bounce back. Look how he puts the brakes on there and completely reverses his field, outruns Sadiq Shabazz, and picks up nice yardage all by himself. So 10 for Fred Reed, Bombers marching. Kevin Glenn coming off his season best, 368 yards in Hamilton last week. Big Joe Smith, his first carry, and he'll carry the pile inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. And a six-yard pickup for Fred or for Joe Smith on his first carry. Well, three games now for Joe Smith, and, and he's averaging about eight yards or eight carries a uh, game. And Fred Reed averaging about 12. So together with Kevin Glenn calling the plays, 
He's involving his running game about 20 snaps a game, which is a, about where you want to be for that balance. Fred Reed getting 12 and Joe Smith eight. Give Joe seven and it's second and three. Then on a roll. Williams will bring him down. Terrence Edwards starting to heat up. He has four touchdowns in the last three games and another first down bomber catch. Terrence Edwards in the middle of that three receiver side. He kind of takes advantage of a little bit of a pick by R.J. Franklin there. Lenny Williams can't break down underneath it. He has to go around that rub and come underneath to trace Terrence Edwards down. Guys mentioned three 1,000 yard receivers last year and the Bombers with three receivers in the top 12. Edwards, Bryant, and Armstrong. First down. Glenn's got time to look for Armstrong in the end zone and almost picked off. Sadiq Shabazz in support as Armstrong drew double coverage in the end zone. Well, it started out man-to-man -man coverage, but that, that is the job of the free safety, Sadiq Shabazz, to come all the way across, and when he sees Kevin Glenn start to get in that position where his shoulders are pointed upwards like he's going to launch that deep ball, that's when he flies over there and he goes over to help his man and ends up being double coverage on Armstrong. So second and ten. Bombers have started much better the last three games. 28 points, four touchdowns in the last three games in the opening quarter. That ball nearly picked off as it was tipped in the air at the defensive line. Darrell Robertson, six foot five, out of Georgia Tech in his second start and looked like he got his hand on it. He starts out there on that edge and, and he's just going to get held up and that's when he does go and tip it he reads it and almost tips it right to his own man he was in Dallas Cowboy camp for a little bit late release there and joined the Edmonton Eskimos and starting to rotate some youth into that defensive alignment so Cerna on to attempt a 33 yarder Jamie Stoddard the holder they had trouble on one last week no trouble here but Cerna just missed just wide, and Tristan Jackson brought it out to the six, and he is hit hard there. Dominic Picard, the center, fired up after that tackle. These days are now below 500 between the 30 and 40 yard line this year on field goal attempts. 11 for 23. Eskimos are backed up, though. They'll start at their seven, their second possession of the game, and it's a Draw, Ron McClendon, left side, Group Dean, and he brings it out to the 18-yard line. Winnipeg defense up front, led by Doug Brown, has four sacks. Gavin Wall's on a bit of a sack tear of late, four sacks in his last six games. He now has five total. The linebacking core, Zeke Moreno, in his second game, has 10 tackles over those two games as a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, and some changes in the secondary Javon Johnson tragically his brother was killed he had to go home our hearts and prayers are with Javon Johnson and his family right now changes in that secondary Ricky Ray's on fire early tonight he's got Fred Stamps up across the 30 yard line There's going to have to be some changes now. So with Javon Johnson out, that moves Stanford Samuels to halfback. And it put, puts Robert Bean on the field so they can keep Kelly Malville at the linebacking court. So Willie Amos will be on the short side of that secondary. He's been picked on a little bit already. Ian Logan is the safety, and Robert Bean's on the wide side corner. Bean back from the nine-game disabled list. After a broken hand, first down, Ray pocket collapse but he dumps it off and the fullback Matt Bertrand with the catch and Zeke Moreno there to bring him down at the 38 yard line you know they close to six you know Chris when you look at at Ricky Ray and I, I I've really felt that since the Labor Day rematch against Calgary Mike Lavinjo hit him a couple times in the first series he really didn't look the same he, he his throwing motion wasn't quite right the Edmonton Eskimos say he is healthy they, he is taking all the first reps in practice during the practice week 
He's starting to look better now. He's looked better in this game early on. He did admit that he didn't have his accuracy a couple of weeks ago against Hamilton. Flag down as Stamps is cut down on the play. Good tackle there by Stanford. Samuel. Being released by the Eskimos back in June. Let's find out what the penalty marker is all about. It is against the Eskimos, the least penalized team in the CFL. Glenn Johnson's crew in charge tonight. Holding Edmonton number 63. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. That was Joe McGrath. And, and just to take you back to that Labor Day rematch. The Edmonton Eskimos early in the game. It was, in fact, the first series for Ricky Ray. Hit by Mike Lavinjo a couple times. That was one of them. Since that hit, he got up real slow after that. He really hasn't looked the same. He's thrown five interceptions to one touchdown in his last few games. Fumbled the ball eight times. Lost four this season. Not typical Ricky Ray type play. Penalty cost a first down and now sets up second and 14. And Ray just throws that into the dirt as Gavin Walls turned up the heat. Part of it, though, Chris, and, and I talked to Danny Machocci about it, clearly they have to protect the ball, ball better. That's one thing they worked on all week long. But the other thing for Ricky Ray, according to Danny Machocci, is getting that protection up front. You see the right side, Joe McGrath, a little bit of a hold there on Gavin Walls. He had a bit, he had some problems last week in Montreal. And, and gave up a couple of sacks. They need to give Ricky Ray some more protect, protection. So Prefontaine on, tied for second with Burke Dales in punting at 46.7, and Armstead awaits. And again, the wind at the back of the Eskimos here in the opening quarter. Doesn't get that high, though, line drive. And a couple of hops into the hands of Armstead. And Armstead finds a crease. Jason Armstead across midfield, and dropped Inside the 45 by Chris Chinsky. Armstead's got things going. God returns for Winnipeg. Giving the 2008 GMC Sierra more power doesn't make it professional grade. Giving it 315 horsepower while making it the most fuel-efficient 4x4 full-size pickup does. The 2008 GMC Sierra. We gave it more power. We made it more fuel efficient. We examined everything and overlooked nothing. Then backed it with the best...